Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to take a look at the updated GPS tab in the new iNav 7.1 configurator. Firstly, before getting on, I'm feeling a bit under the weather today, so if this isn't up to my usual shoddy standards, sorry about that, um, but please bear with me. Uh, this is something that I've seen pop up a few times uh, in the iNav fixed wing group and on Discord is issues understanding, I guess is the best term, uh, the new GPS page in iNav. So what we're going to do is take a look at that and potentially see some of the unexpected behavior that people are struggling with. So first of all, quite recently, INAV Configurator 7.0.1 was released. So if you're not using that version, head over to the GitHub and download the latest release. Today is New Year's Eve. So if you're looking at this video in the future, there's probably a, a newer version out. But uh, just make sure you're on the latest version of Configurator. Uh, you definitely shouldn't be using any release candidate stuff now. So just go to that page, download the version you want, and then we can carry on. Just a quick note, because again, this is something that has popped up, is if you're a Windows user, there are two versions, well, they're technically three versions, but who uses 32-bit anymore? Um, there's the exe file and there's the zip file. If you are just running a single instance of iNav, so everything is on the same version, so in this case 7.0, you can use the EXE. That will basically be the only configurator on your system. If you want to run multiple different versions, say you've got some old craft that you haven't updated yet and they've got 6.0 on it still, um, then use the zip file and then you can have multiple versions of configurator. So that's just a little tip there but let's get into it. Right, so let's just go and connect to the flight controller and we're gonna pop straight into the GPS tab. And the bit that's changed is this area here. Most of it is very similar, but there are a few additions, namely these constellations that you can choose from. And what's happening, I'll, I'll see if I can cause the problem. So let's turn that on so they're all turned on and we'll do a save and reboot. Now what people are finding is that when they turn everything on, and come back to the GPS page, it's done it, everything is turned off. And the reason for this is that not all constellations are compatible. So I believe it is the Beidou and Glosnas, they use the same ID. So if you enable both of them, it doesn't work. The other thing is the actual module that you're using in your aircraft may only support so many constellations. And I believe most cases it can be four, but it depends on the chip you're using. So you'd need to check out the uh, specifications for your GPS module. I made a video previewing INAF 7 a while back and someone did actually correct me and say that, that this should all be GNSS, which technically is true. GPS is actually the first GNSS, which GNSS is Global Navigation Satellite System and GPS, the Global Positioning System, was the first Global Navigational Satellite System. So it's sort of like, I don't know, if you're in the UK, you might re refer to all vacuum cleaners as hoovers and you know, maybe something a bit more familiar is referring to all colas as Coke, which both cases, they're not, they're brand names and people are just using that brand name because at some stage it was the most recognized. So everyone just calls, for example, all colas, they just say, I'll oh, have a Coke whereas Coke is you know, the, the brand name of the company who put cocaine in it originally. So yeah, technically it should all be GNSS, but in INAV it is referred to as GPS. I don't really care. Well, as long as you know what you mean, then it's all good with me. I mean, technically GNSS would be better because GPS is actually a constellation. So maybe sometimes that would get confusing, but as you can see, there's no GPS constellation here in the options. And the reason for that is it is always enabled. That brings me back to the, maybe the four or sometimes two maximum constellations that you can have, is that even though these are all off at the moment, one is actually on. Actually, SBAS may also be on, but I'd need to double check that. So there's at least one already turned on. So these are optional extras. And again, these are all GNSS, so technically they are global, but you may find that maybe your module doesn't support a certain type, or you know, set maybe the groupings are slightly better for some locations. So let's do a quick test. Let's turn on Glosnaz and Beidou and see if that resets. Yeah, so basically 
with these two systems, just choose the one that is best for you. And you can actually find out where the, the satellites are. So the GNSS company usually has a diagram. There's definitely one for Galileo that shows the orbits of the satellites. So you may find that depending on the orbits of satellites, there may be some that are slightly better for you, but um, just choose at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. They should all be covering the entire globe. So I'm just going to enable those two and that should all work fine now. Before we go on, let me just cover a few other little bits. Uh, NMEA has been removed and you can see basically there's U-Blox, U-Blox 7, MSP and a fake GPS. I would recommend for everyone the first attempt, try U-Blox 7. If it's a old U-Blox GPS, it should fall back to using standard U-Blox anyway. And if it does support U-Blox 7, you'll have access to the faster speeds, uh, that sort of thing. So it's much better just to try that if it works perfect. While we're on here, we have got automatic daylight savings time. So we can turn that on and off and also the time zone offset. So for example, let's say we're in mainland Europe, we could set this to plus one hour. And then when we get the clock from the GNSS, it will actually be the correct time for us. So they're just a couple of other little tips. Another thing that people sometimes struggle with is if the GPS is working or not, and they can be flipping wires back and forth for ages um, with the RX and TX. A simple, simple check is if this is blue and if total messages here is going up, then you know there's not an issue with the flight controller and the GPS talking and understanding each other. So if they're, if they're going up, then that's all good. If they're not, then it's a communications issue. So potentially board rate could be an issue, but most likely this is the RX and TX are swapped. If you're new to this, TX goes to RX and then RX goes to TX. TX is talking, RX is listening. You need one on each end of the cable. So that's the most common problems with the GPS. I mean, you can see mine has been sat up here for ages and it's got, well, four satellites now. It's been plugged in the whole time, pretty much we've been doing this video. Don't worry, it's indoors. It's not gonna get a great fix. And also at the moment, it's had a load of these turned off. So if we do a save and reboot, maybe it'll pick something up. But yeah, if you're indoors and the total messages are going up, the, the satellite logo or the GPS logo is blue, then it's, it's working. It's, the problem is actually seeing, <laughs> seeing the sky and actually being able to pick up the signals from the satellites. So if you took it outside, chances are it would work. If it's a new GPS module, it could take a little bit of time to get the very first fix. It needs to download what's known as an almanac from the satellites, but next time it will be much quicker to get to actually make the acquisition. So yeah, you can see we're, we're at no satellites again. And, but I know this works. I've flown this many times. Just don't get too disheartened if you're indoors and it's not picking stuff up. It's not usually a problem. As long as that's working and that's blue, then it should work when you go outside or you, I don't know, you could put it by a window maybe. If you put it by a window, there's a better chance of it picking up. But if you're in a building, especially if you're low down in a building, then don't be too disheartened that you've not got satellites. But as I say, I know this module works. I've flown with it many times and it works perfectly. So there are the changes in iNav for the GPS page. I hope this has answered a couple of questions and I hope this is useful for you guys. If it has been, please remember to leave a thumbs up and click the subscribe and bell icon. That will help get this video out to more people. Oh, there we go. I've got five now. Oh, there we go. We've actually got six sats now. So, um, and it's a 3D fix. That reminds me actually, some people will see six satellites and say they can't arm. They need to be 3D fixes. If they're not, then it's, it's just a, a basic fix. It won't arm. It needs six, at least six fixes with a 3D fix to arm. So this at the moment, even though it has six, it keeps dropping down to five. So it probably won't arm. But if I took it outside or it got a stable uh, six, then it would be fine. But anyway, <laughs> let's finish the video off because 
I think it's all covered now. But yeah, thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe and bell icon to help share the video with more people and also you'll get notifications of other topics that may be interesting to you. But thank you very much for watching. Fly your models like you stole them and I'll see you on the next one.